Right, today we'll use Java to solve a game called Towers. It's also been called Skyscrapers. So let's get started and try playing it. Uh, basically you need to have, kind of like in Sudoku, each row and column has all the numbers exactly once. The number on each um, side indicates how many of the skyscrapers or towers are visible from that perspective, from that location. So this square here must be four because otherwise we would see more than one um, tower from that viewing point. So that's an easy way to get started. Or if there are any ones, just put a four next to it so that it blocks out any other towers. Another easy strategy is seeing if there are any fours, and in that case, they would have to start at one and increment each time. So here would be one, two, three, four, and by that you're able to see four towers from this bottom four. Likewise for this one, we'll do one, two, three, four, and from here we can probably solve by a process of elimination what the remaining towers are. So here we have 4, 3, 2, so we know this one has to be a 1, that's the only missing one in that row. And this bottom row has a 3 there, so we know it has to be 2, 3, the 1 won't be visible from the left side, and then 4, so that completes that. So this first row, looking from the bottom, it it's expecting two, so it has to be a one there. If it were a three, you'd be seeing two, three, four is the tower heights. So let's do two, one, four, so that the one is hidden behind the two. Process of elimination can give you the rest of these. Let's first get the boards. So we'll represent them as a two-dimensional array of type int. So we'll have the board, we'll call split2, we'll write a method, helper method for that, and another two-dimensional array for the clues. So those are on the sides indicating how many towers are visible from each point. And for that one let's use the convention top, bottom, left, right for which sides of the clues I'll show in a second. So let's create split2 method. We'll name these s and cell delimiter. We'll just have a string array for all the lines and that would just be s split by a semicolon. Let's make a two-dimensional int array, just name it array, and let's initialize it. So it would be lines.length, index 0 dot split, right, because we want to split by the cell delimiter, and that would give an array, and dot length. We'll use int i is 0 and j is 0, and we'll iterate over all the lines, and then iterate over each of the cells, or number I'll call it here, and the line will split it by the cell delimiter to get each of the numbers that we'll be looping over. So we'll set index i j plus plus integer dot parse int zero plus number and we'll then increment i the row and reset the column j to zero and finally return the array let's restart the game have it solve the same one so none of these are filled in yet so we'll just use zeros Again, let's follow convention top, bottom, 
left right so we can follow that for the clues so 2214 and 2241 2123 2321 instantiate tower solver and call the method solve with the board clues and start it tile row equals zeros column equals zero okay and let's create the solve method we'll name these R and C for row and column so similar to if you've seen the other videos what we're going to do is start in the top left cell and work our way to the right until we finish the row and then we'll reset column to zero and increment the row um, the row variable to go to the next row and continue that for the remaining rows and once we get past the final bottom right cell will be at the will be off the board for the row index so we can use that as the stopping condition in our recursion for this method so if r equals board dot length then let's go ahead and print the solution So we can do arrays deep to string board and we can put a to do comment to format it so that it's easier for people to read and we'll return true that we were able to solve it. So we'll change this method signature to be boolean as the return type. So let's get the next column and the next row. Column, let's do C plus one. If it is less than the number of columns, that is board index zero dot length, meaning it's still on the board, then let's just assign that as the value. Otherwise, let's reset it to zero. And we can use that result to see what the next row would be. So if next column is zero, we know we need to increment the row. Otherwise, let's stay on the same row. And some of these, the tile, it already has a value given to it. So let's put a condition for that. So if board row column doesn't equal zero, then let's just return solve next uh, board clues and then the next row and next column. Okay. So what we'll do is get a list of the possible values for the current cell and we'll just try it with the first one and then recursively call solve. See if that works, if it does, then we're done. If it doesn't work, let's try the next possible value for this cell and so on until we've exhausted all of the possible values for this cell. If none of them work, then that means we've made a mistake earlier on. So we'll just return false. We weren't able to solve it and bubble up to wherever we need to go um, and fix an earlier mistake we made and proceed from there until eventually we'll find a solution. So we'll have a list of integers. Let's call it possibles and we'll get possibles. We'll make a method for that. So board clues row column and then for each of the possibilities And we could even put this on the same line in here. So 
So we'll assign this cell the value possible. And if solve with the next row and column given this possible value in the current, then we'll return true. Otherwise, if none of these values work, then let's just reset the current tile to zero, meaning we haven't um, worked on solving this yet, like I mentioned before, and bubble up so that we can fix previous mistakes and then retry this later. And we'll return false. We weren't able to solve it. So next we'll make the get possible the get possibles. So board clues row and column. Okay, got those right. So list integer possibles. Okay, equals new array list. Let's go ahead and import those. So for each possible value, so we'll do, we'll just name it n, start at 1, while it's less than or equal to the board length, we'll increment it, and check if n already in row or column is already in row or column. We'll start it out with false and have a variable here i less than board dot length. So we'll assume that this is a square board and do board row i equals n or board i c equals n um, then is already in row or column would be true and we'll break out of this for loop and the current index board r c is still equal to zero so this won't be um, caught by that so if it's not already in the row or column, let's have another check to see if it matches the clues. So at this point, we'll go ahead and assign it board row column equals n. And if matches clue, we'll do board clues index 0, index C. So that will give us the clue we're looking at. We'll pass the starting row and starting column, so 0 and C. And we'll pass the delta R and delta C that will be um, iterating over to check if it matches the clue. So for this one we'll be going downward, so we'll be incrementing the row plus one each time and incrementing the column plus zero, or staying the same each time. So we'll leave that as one comma zero. Okay, and matches clue board clues one C. So remember the pattern we're following here, top, bottom, left, right. So we finished the top clues, now let's do the bottom clues. So 1, comp, uh, index 1, C. Um, we will start at board.length minus 1, comma C, 
and this time we'll be starting from the bottom, so we'll be subtracting one from the row each time when checking the clue, and we'll be keeping the the column the same, so zero there plus zero each time. Now let's do the next one, so board clues index two, index row. We'll start at row comma zero column, and we'll be keeping the row the same, so zero comma, and then we'll be incrementing the column by one each time as we go right, so zero comma one for that and matches clue. Here's the last one. Clues 3 R and we'll start at index R comma board index 0 dot length minus 1 and we'll be traveling by keeping the row the same so 0 and we'll be decrementing the column by one each time because we'll be starting at the right side and going left. So minus one. So assuming it matches all of the clues putting this in in this tile then we'll say it's a possibility. So possibles.add in. And finally let's reset it board row column is zero and return the possibilities. Okay, let's create this method now. Matches clue. So board clue are not or the row we start. Let's see not the column we start. Um, delta row and delta column. So another edge condition is for some of the more difficult ones it doesn't give you clues for every row or column it just has it empty. So we'll need to take that into account. So if the clue is zero then we'll just say yes we, it matches the clue because there is no clue so it's still valid. So we'll put that there. We'll keep track of the max encountered tower so far and we'll just have that as where we're starting now because it's the the first one that we're starting at so it has to be the the biggest so we'll set that. We'll keep track of the number of visible towers. So if this one is already set, then number of visible towers is one. If it's not set, then it, we haven't seen any yet. So it's we'll set this as zero. So um, board row not c not. If it's equal to zero, then we haven't seen any towers. If it is set, then we've seen one tower itself. Next, we'll do r is r not plus delta row, and c is c not plus delta column. And then we'll have a boolean is complete, and We'll initialize that as starting with the R not C not if it's not equal to zero. We'll just start it with that not equal zero. And later on if we see any which are not set, then we'll just set is complete as false. So for int i is 1, i is less than board.length, i plus plus, if board row column is 0, so here's what I was saying before, if we find one that's 
not set yet, then we know it's not complete. And so we'll set that to false. Else, if board row column is greater than the max encountered, then we found a, an even bigger one. So we'll set that max encountered is board row column. And we'll increment the number visible towers so far. And for each iteration, we'll increment R and C by the delta for each. So we'll return not is complete or number visible is equal to the clue. Let's fix this. So change method return type. Okay, so I made it return an int array. Let's go ahead and change it to return a list of integer. So let's go ahead and try running it. And it looks like it completed. So let's replace end bracket, comma space, open bracket. Let's replace that with a close bracket, new line space, open bracket. And replace a comma with a tab. Okay, let's run that. Okay, so that's a bit easier to read. Let's check this. And let's try the solution. Okay, so that solved it. Let's try 6 by 6 unreasonable and input the clues. And again, this is top, bottom, left, right. So with these, without a clue, we'll just put 0. Run that. Check the solution. Okay, it solved it.